Welcome back to What Arty Noobs with General Disturbance, and this is a batch of teaming on 155.58, the tier 10 French SPG, and we're on Klondike, and this is a grand battle. Now the commander of this batch at is Laughing Kitty, and we're waiting for him to engage. Yep, his turret's moving about a bit. Okay. Off to find his fighting position. And he's heading away from the lighthouse. Now, as many of you know, the Batchat 15558 was actually a prototype which was never actually, yeah, it was designed but it was never actually uh, put into mass production. It was based on the uh, Batchat 25 ton chassis and it was also going to have this swiveling turret and the autoloader but uh, it just never came about okay now the rest of the team was spread out and we've got some targets that have appeared but it looks like uh, nothing kitty's going to pull into a further into his firing position protect himself from any kind of battery. He's right up in the northeast corner of the map. Okay, he's now extending his aim. Okay, first target, a Batchat 25 ton. Obviously the same chassis that's used for the Batchat. No doubt. Oh, close. 155 millimeter rounds exploded just to the side of that Batchat. He got 120 hit points there. T57 heavy in the water. Oh, that one explodes right next door to him. And that round did as well, but not much damage. But he has picked up stun, stun assist. And that one went in. That did cause 232 hit points. And one critical hit. So I think he actually bust the track. Pretty sure he did. Ooh, took a big hunt hit there, so he's picked up lots of stun assist. Well, in fact, actually not stun assist, damage assistance, because uh, he was hit because of the track. Okay, waiting for the reload to go through. It is a fairly long reload, and that T-57 Heavy has been taken out. It's approximately 4 seconds between shells once they're loaded. It takes 33 seconds to actually load the magazine. It used to be a lot longer when there was 4 shells in the magazine, but I think it actually does work better with just 3 shells. And that first round went in. There was an enemy just slightly to the west there, but... He's loaded again, but that 25 tons being chased around the... around the factories. And there's the Gorilla 15. Okay. Dial in the aim. Rounds out. Oh, no. <laughs> Overshot. Gorilla Fit pulled away. There's, oh, there's the enemy RT and he's gone. Right, he's firing another round in at the where the 15 was located. Don't know if he got anything there. He decided to pull down, but no, he's decided to go back where he was. Now, I think that may be because there's a heavy enemy presence in the northwest corner of the map at the moment. So he's got plenty of targets. Okay, he's extending his aim to the factories area. Or rather, I should say, the mining area. Okay, T110 E5 or 48 pattern. He's going to go for the E5 first. Almost loaded. Almost ready. 355 millimeter rounds. Round out. Oh, well, that went right into the rear of the E5. 307 hit points of damage there. Going for the M48 pattern now. Rounds out. Overshot. Landed behind him, but still stunned him. Can't hit that object 268, unfortunately, but he can put a round into the pattern. And he stuns the pattern. He tracks him. But I don't think he's going to be able to save that E100. No, he can't. 
so there's four enemy tanks in that region. Now there's an M48 pattern moving up to intercept them, and it's only the E5 that's coming around this way. There's T62s going the opposite direction around. Oh, no, there's an M48 pattern on the enemy team coming around there as well. Okay. The friendly pattern has more health. And the only trouble is, of course, the enemy might try to get behind him. Try to surround him. Put shells in from multiple directions. Right, he's loaded. He's ready to go. He's lining up a shot on the pattern. Right out. It stuns him, does 72 hit points of splash. There's an enemy STRB-103 a little further off. I wonder if the pattern spotted that. But the T-62 is coming down this way. And looks like he's going face to face. He's chasing the uh, M48. Well, that round was fired at the pattern, but it's just... No, it's too far away. Now, he's got one round left. Looks like he's going to go for that 62. He's been tracked. And it overshoots. Okay, there's an E3 behind that T-62. Now, can he turn around in time to avoid being taken out? And that's the unfortunate thing is that the E3 doesn't have the, hurri the turret of the uh, some of the other American tank destroyers. And that means that uh, he is susceptible if they can get behind him. They did get the batch at T-25 time. Uh, but unfortunately, E3's gone down. Right. Most of the rest of the force, remaining force, has turned up. He's loaded and ready to shoot. Rounds out straight away on that 68. Wow! He got the E4. That was a snapshot on the E4 and it worked. Now he's going to have to get out of there quick because uh, the unfortunate thing is the enemy is headed this way. And hopefully the other RT have noticed this, and they're moving as well. So Object 261 and the GWE 100 know they're suffering hits. They should have moved. They should have moved the moment they've spotted. And the enemy is capping. Now that Leopard's going to have to get spots for Laughing Kitty to put rounds into the cap to prevent the enemy from winning. The Leopard's moving up. Now, will he be able to see them? He's got two rounds to do it and get a reset. Still waiting for that spot. Right, that T-62's gone down. GWE-100 got him. Shotgun. Oh, there he is. Okay, it's an E50M. Dialed in, rounds out. Oh, it hit the rock face. Oh, no, that's terrible. But the E50 was hit, and there is a reset. Okay, he's loaded. Dialed in, round out, and he gets a hit. Whilst that E50 is tracked, he got a hit on him. But he's now got a long reload. Now, is he going to move? Yes, I think so. He's going to back away. Find a new firing position. There are still arty on the enemy team. That's the problem. If he is spotted, they could still take him out. So he might, needs to find somewhere safe that he can lay fire into that cap, just in case. I think they've got him in hand at the moment. They have got a two tank deficit at the moment. Okay, AMX 50. He's oscillating about a spot. Okay, round out. Direct hit! And they're back in the cap again. This time it's the E5's turn. And we can see him this time because he is being spotted. Dialing in the aim on that spot. Rounds out. Direct hit. Reset the cap. And another one's picking up stun assist. And the E5 has moved. He's not happy. Oh, and that will stun him again. But he didn't reset the cap. He left the cap of his own accord. 
he knows he's in grave danger. If he stays there, he is going to get killed. He has to pull back. He's hugging that rock at the moment because he knows that if he moves out, Artie's going to get him. Right, there's a badger over here. It's last seen over here. That Jaegeru is coming around, but there is actually an AMX 50B behind the Jaegeru. And the SDRB. Can he put a round into both of them? Well, he stuns both of them and he actually does some splash damage. I think he was after the bombardier there. Rounds out again. Oh, he's got the 50B! He splashed the 50B to death. Well, that's useful. Now, there's an E5 up there. And unfortunately, can't see it at the moment. Nope. There's Conquer gun carriage down on the beach, so he has still got uh, one RT teammate. But I think really he ought to relocate. The enemy's got a T-92. It's got a bit of protection here, but the problem is really that the T-110E5, if he moves south, there's a very good chance he might actually spot Laughing Kitty in the back chat and put rounds into him whilst he can't be seen. So it would be advisable for him to move further uh, west at this point. The Leopard is spotting further over. That Badger hasn't been dealt with, nor the STRV 103B. So it's only a question of where can they find the E5 and take him out. That's the same E5 that was capping only a short while ago. Okay, Leopard's going hunting. Still no sign of the E5. Bat chat 25's looking. Got two minutes, 22 seconds to go. This is looking very much like it's going to be uh, a draw. Scores are fairly even now, so... We'll have to see. But if they can't find the E5 or the other enemies, then it looks as if it's uh, headed for a draw. That's the two minute warning. Twenty five ton is moving up. If they're gonna spot the E5, it'd probably be about now. No, he's not there. Ah, he spotted him. He was behind that rock. Okay, well that gives uh, Laughing Kitty a target. But can he put a round into that uh, E5? Oh, it's a bit of a risk for the Bat Chat to do that. Because he's also susceptible to arty rounds. But he did take out the uh, E5. Now he needs to get out of there quick. To avoid being hit by uh, the arty. And he's managed to do that. The leopard's going up the west side. He's looking for targets, but he can't find. That's the minute warning. He's found the T-92. Okay, zeroing in on the target. He's motoring. He knows he's been spotted. He's going for cover. Oh, that was a fantastic shot, that was. He estimated exactly where he was going to go, and he got him. 500 hit points, just like that. GW E100, direct hit. 306 hit points, but he's lost sight of him. 28 seconds to go. Can't see it. Oh no, there's the SCRV 103. He's just found the uh, Conqueror gun carriage. 
Laughing Kitty's getting his uh, gun round onto the... Oh no, that was too late! Ten seconds to go. He's in reload now. There's nothing more he can do. Just needs to get behind cover. This is going to be a draw for certain. Oh dear. Well, it was a good try. And that shot on the T-92 was absolutely amazing. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, it's a second class tanker. The Laughing, Kit Laughing Kitty in the batch of dealing on 155.58. He also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, crew incapacitations or module damage. He also picked up a confederate because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks that were subsequently destroyed by other members of his team. And just look at that sheer number of targets that he hit. He was hitting just about everybody he could during that battle. Okay, let's have a look at the team scores. Well, he comes top for damage. 3,689 hit points. But he was um, eclipsed by the strv 103 b on the enemy team who actually managed 5,076 hit points of damage. Laughing Kitty came second on his own team with three kills. And he came third when it came to uh, base XP with 510. He fired 24 rounds, got six direct hits, six penetrations, 16 splash damage, did damage of 3,689 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He hit 14 of the enemy. 14 and managed to kill three of them he did damage assistance of 599 most of that was on the uh, t57 heavy and he did stun assistance of 2007 hit points off 19 stuns he also managed to stop 12 capture points or rather 12 defense points uh, on the uh, tanks that were capping with a premium account he earned 62,350 credits had a personal reserves bonus going at the same time of 34,685 and he picked up a 7,018 achievements award and there's a holiday ops bonus in there as well that's missing so the total came to 120,703 credits and after ammunition resupply and the 155mm rounds are really cheap he still took home 93,823 credits in total he received XP of 765 and he also had an achievements award of 484 and a personal reserves bonus as well so he took away 2800 experience points in total so well done uh, laughing kitty and it's just a pity that you were not able to uh, uh, get the win uh, it was very very unfortunate indeed but uh, the confederate medal is um, uh, at least some compensation because you did receive, because of that medal, you did receive the same scores as if you had actually won the, the uh, battle. If you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay I'll be featuring in my next video.